Hello there, everyone. So what do you think of our newest intro video? I do hope that you're liking it. It does remind me of going up in a lift, um, but it, it, it was happy. I enjoyed and the little flowers at the bottom are very, very cute. So hello there. Uh, hello again this week. So happy Thursday. I hope that you're having a great week and that you do have, you've really done something cool and inventive maybe today as well. So we did have a new release today and that is the fabulous Craft Your Life kit. So we have a new Craft Your Life kit out and I will show you the product products in this once I flip you down. Hello there everyone that has popped in today. Hello there, all to new. Uh, thank you so much for being there behind the badge. I believe it's Angel. Please let me know if I am incorrect. Um, so hello there, everyone that has popped in. Also, if you do share this live stream, you are in with a chance of winning a $15 gift certificate to the Alternu store. Oh, thank you, Avril. Yes, we have new ones now. So I get to, I have a choice of two Alternu hoodies that I get to wear on my lives now. So I hope that you're all good. I am going to pop you down and then we can take a look at the products that we've got in the kit. And then we are going to create a card. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. I have that music in my head now. <laughs> do, do, do. All right. Okay. We're a little bit off on the camera. I must have knocked it. So in our Craft Your Life a project kit this month, we are going to get a six by eight stamp set like we always do. In here, we have two kind of two beautiful floral corners as well as some really great sentiments in here as well. As well as that, we are gonna get a stencil set. So this is a layering stencil set. So this is gonna enable us to add in the layers to those two large images that we have on the stamp set. We also have the layering guide for this. Oh, it's, it's within the stamp packaging, sorry. I thought that one opened. I was wrong. The layering guide for the stamp and the stencil on are in here. Okay. And as well as that, we're going to get two dies. So these are going to cut along the outside edge of these two corner stamps that we have here. And then we also have a 3D embossing folder with this really beautiful flower arrangement on here. I'm just going to Pull that up so you can see just how pretty this is here. If you do want any more inspiration using this, I would advise checking out the blog. And today's post will have tons of inspiration using this very beautiful kit. So I am going to be creating a kind of a gatehouse, a gatefold card with these. Okay. And I'm just going to choose one of these corners. I think this one may be the best one to use, but this one's also really good too. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put one on top of the other to see if one kind of goes over a little bit more. Carol, I'm glad that you've already received yours. That's super. Oh, and Nancy, you have yours as well. Cool. So you guys could technically be crafting with me right now with your very own kit, which is pretty cool. Okay, so they're pretty much the same size. So that means it doesn't really matter which one I choose. I'm going to go for this one. Okay. So I'm going to go with the one that has the really big dahlia on it. I'm just going to pull my sleeves up. I find I work better with my sleeves pulled up. Okay. And I'm going to stamp this on to two side folding card bases. And I want them to be the same orientation too, I believe. Um, yes. So I'm just going to take my stamp positioning tool 
I'm going to place one of my card bases in there. And then pop my stamp into place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so happy that, ev that a lot of people have all received their kit. And that's really pretty exciting. Maybe next time you're alive and you received your kit before it's out, everyone should get theirs out on everyone should craft using the kit that would should be that would be really really cool so i'm just going to ink these up and i'm just using the obsidian ink from alternate oh i've got it over my thumb Oops. oh carol juicing lemons that sounds fun mm. Okay, so stamp that down. Okay, I didn't place it that far over this edge. I should have got it right up to the edge. So if you are trying to recreate this with your kit on the replay or even now, um, just make sure that you do kind of push it right over to that edge. Right, so I have the one here, and I'm going to do the same. It's folding the same way. I'm just going to ink this up again using some black ink. And then stamp that down. Okay, so I have two of the images and I am going to quickly give them a little bit of a heat set. Yeah, Janelle, I think that it's got a different feel to this one. I think it's a little bit more whimsy. It reminds me of, I don't know, kind of Wonderlandy-ish maybe. I am going to heat set this so I will be a little bit quiet but my heat tool will be a little bit loud. Thank you so much for sharing, everyone. If you do share this live stream, you are in with a chance of winning a $15 gift certificate to the Ulta New Store. So if you don't already have your kit, you would be able to put that gift certificate towards this if you really wanted to. So I'm just heat setting this ink so it doesn't blend or bleed when I do ink blend over it. Um, you could also heat set with some clear embossing powder or use a different kind of ink if you wanted to. I've just grabbed my obsidian. I probably should have just grabbed a dye ink. Oh, sorry, I forgot my inks. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to grab some pink some yellows, some blues. And some greens. Oh, I can't believe I forgot my inks today. Um, I was wondering why my um, desk looked pretty clean before I started. I was like, I've got everything here. I've got my kit. Uh, I didn't bring my ink, so I'm sorry. Everyone. I ran off, but I'm back. So I have my two images now, both exactly the same, and I'm then going to take my simple coloring stencils. I just love simple coloring stencils. I know there are people out there that are loving theirs as well because they're just so easy to use. Okay. 
Yep, really wasn't prepared today, right? <sighs> I guess we all have those days where you do actually have to get off your chair <laughs> to find things. I know, after all, I tidied them away again today. And now, you know, if I didn't tidy them away, I would have had some. Silly me. So I'm going to take the first stencil. You can see that it is the first one. It has the number one on here. And this is going to line up with these leaves that we have. So it's going to add color to all of the leaves on this stencil. I'm going to be using some grass fields for this. Okay, so I'm just going to place that into position and then add that color through. I'm using a mini blending tool. I don't normally use these ones. I only have one set. So it's the ones that I have like less colors for. But I have to say, these are really, really good at getting the color down and really easy to control. So if you're having like trouble with blending tools that are too small to handle, these are actually really good and ergonomically designed. <clears throat> so I'm just going to add my colors through and then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other one. <laughs> oh, Vicky, I feel like you too. Um, I struggle finding things once I've cleaned them away. And I think <laughs> as well as in my craft room, that goes for the rest of the house as well. <laughs> so, oh, if like my children ask me if I put things away and I'm like, yes, um, I have. Uh, I'll get back to you when I know where it is. <laughs> so again, this is the grass field for these leaves here. Okay. Right. So I have that. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to flip my stencil and it's going to fit in with the smaller flowers that you can see around the outside edge. And for these ones, I'm going to go some pinks here and I might do these. I might do these blue and these pink. <clears throat> yes, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go with a pink pearl. Yep, so, and like, you know, when you put something because you want to know where it is and you put it somewhere safe, that safe place is the hardest place to find when you need to. Yep, I get you. I know. So I have some pink pearl on the little poppy images that we have, I think. Now I'm going to go with blue for that one. Oh, Liz, yes, these are, this kit is so, so beautiful. Sorry. I'm, I'm not saying that they're not all beautiful, but this one is, has a really different feel to this one. So I'm going to go with cloudy sky for this next part here. Yep, Vicky, that's the safe place. When you've put that present in the safe place, but then you need it, or even like your passport or something like that. Yeah, I do it all the time. I put them in a safe place and then I forget. It must be a really super safe place because there must be a lot of things in there that I've lost over the years. I'm just going to move this around so I'm not kind of putting my hand in it. Okay. So we have that. And I'm going to do exactly the same on this one. And you can see just how pretty these are looking already. Oops, move things. Yes, me too, Janelle. And the fact that I don't have to do any masking to get these floral cl clusters. That's one of the biggies for me. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a lazy crafter. Um, so the least I can do 
and it's for it to still look amazing that is what I'm going to do and these simple coloring stencils are fabulous I was talking to Bridget um a little while ago I think I think it might have been Monday or Tuesday and we were saying like when we don't have the simple coloring stencil now we're like hmm what am I supposed to do, <laughs> do with this outline stamp am I supposed to color it <laughs> that's gonna take forever but I mean I still enjoy coloring but to have the choice of being able to just kind of throw down an ink color and have it look this pretty I, I still love that choice too Oh, Nancy, I'm glad that you find it. Yep, that safe place. I think we need to, to mark on our like fridges where those safe places are because I think everyone's got one and there are things in that safe place that should have been found long ago. All right, so this is gonna be this large flower that we have. I'm gonna do this more of a red color. Um, and to find the right way of the stencil, you're gonna look for the etching. It's gonna say alternate, it's gonna have the ampersand and it is gonna have a number on there as well. So I'm just gonna pop that one into place and I'm gonna go darker with this one. So I am gonna go heartbeat for the first layer of this one here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, I am using a mix of the minis and the small bending tools. I may even go into the little detailed ones as well. You know, you don't have to kind of stick to one. Ria, okay, so a great way to make a white flower and to make it look like you've colored it when you actually haven't is to actually mask it off. So what I would do is I would stamp the white flower, I would add a mask to the top, and then I would ink around the outside with like a blue color or a gray color. And then when you pull the mask off, your flower is gonna be white and your background is gonna have that like soft halo look with the ink blending. And that is how I would start with the white flower. And then I would just add some simple shading in. Hopefully, Ria, that makes sense. Please let me know if it doesn't and I can try and explain it further as well. Vicky, yes, minimum effort. Candice, okay, um, I can show you, but I can't show you right at this second. All right, let me just finish this one off. Okay. Okay, all right. Okay, one sec, I'm just gonna go and grab some masking paper. Okay, so we're in the middle of this one. We've just added some heartbeat to that one, but I am just gonna, I don't know, it's like a little break <laughs> where we go and do something else. Oh yes, you will be able to watch the replay of this if you're unable to watch it now, so don't worry. Okay, so, so a mask is a piece of paper that covers over an image to kind of hide that from whatever you want to do over or underneath. Intermission, yes, Avril. <laughs> we should have like little breaks of just random stuff. So. Say I had this image here and I wanted to create a mask for this flower. So to do that, I would need to stamp the image again onto a piece of paper. You could use some, a paper, you could use some um, sticky notes, but I have some masking paper from Altenew. Now this was made for masking. So what I would do is I would ink up the part of the image that I want to use as a mask. I've probably picked the hardest thing <laughs> to cut out really easily. So, okay. 
So I would stamp it down. Okay. Scissors. I'm so glad Matilda has left my scissors here today. She likes to run off with these. Not that she runs with them because running with scissors is bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut around this image and I would cut as far in to that line as possible. Now, normally when I'm cutting around images, I normally leave a white border. If I am cutting masks, I do go right in to the image and on that line. Okay, I'm trying to be quick, everyone. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Let me know if you've got any like funny stories to share, any good news. That would be helpful. <laughs> I'm really trying to concentrate on this because normally I don't do as detailed a fussy cut. Hopefully, I'm not going too slow for everyone. Okay. And when you can see that I, when I'm cutting around this, if you are a newbie, I recommend trying to keep your scissors at like a 45 degree ang angle away from the image that you cut in. And then move your cardstock rather than your scissors. I mean, you can do a little bit of a wiggle with your scissors, but it's always easier to try and keep your scissors in the same place and use this hand or your other hand if you are left-handed to kind of move that paper around and just feed the image into the blades of your scissors. I find that that is the easiest way to fussy cut Doo -doo -doo. nearly there everyone sorry it took so long okay all right okay so all right hi there Anne. so i'm just going to grab another piece of paper okay Thank you, Sue. I tried to get that done as quick as I could. Let's just pretend that this flower is just a single stem, okay? So I'm just gonna ink that up. Where's my black ink gone? I've lost it. There. So we're just gonna pretend that this part is singular. The rest of it, it's not there, that's invisible, okay. And this is how I would get you know, an easy white flower look. Okay, so I'm just gonna ink. Okay, so we're gonna, you know, ignore <laughs> all of this around here. We're just kind of focusing on this flower because I don't have another stamp out that does have a singular flower. So I can then use my masking paper And then it pops that into place. And then to get the white flower look, I would just take an ink. Okay, everyone, I hope that you're all good. And then I would ink over the mask. Okay, now that mask is gonna kind of capture, sorry. I made a really weird clicking with my tongue. A reason. It's going to uh, capture any ink that you put on top of it, anything that you stamp onto it as well. So if you wanted leaves behind, you could stamp on this part as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink that around. Okay. And then when I remove this masking paper, Okay, you can see that we've got the look of a white flower. And then all you would need to do is add in some really um, light shading. So maybe go for a purple or some blues and just add it in where you think there would be the 
darkest shading. And that is how I would do a really, really simple white look flower. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, please let me know if it doesn't and if you want me to kind of explain it again. But I think, you know, hopefully um, that may have given each and every one of you something to go and try as well. All right. Okay, Candice, I'm glad that that helps. And I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, helps everyone out. Okay. Oh, thanks, Sue. All right. So we're going to, we've finished our intermission now. And we're going to go back to the card that we were creating. So we use one of the corner stamps from the Craft Your Life project kit. We've stamped that into position. We've also added a base layer to all of the flowers using the simple coloring stencil. <laughs> oh, Debbie, I'm glad that um, I really do like it when we go off on a tangent and, you know, we do something a little bit different and it excites people as well. So I'm glad that we did that. So thank you for the questions and we're glad that we had some fun with that one. So I'm taking the second stencil now. And to line this one up, I'm just going to line it up with the leaves and also these two circular flower centers and these ones over here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to miss this one out first because I want the flower centers on last. OK, so sorry, everyone. Confused everyone. Uh, 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 what I want is those flower centers and which stencil on the on. Okay. Oh, they're there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so here we go. On the second stencil. Ugh, I should have just looked at the layering guide. So I'm going to line up these flowers on the edge here. Okay. Yes, those uh, um, presses are really, really good. So I think they do help. I'm a, I'm a lover of the little press things. I'm okay. Okay. So I'm going to use a darker shade for my flowers. So I'm going to be using the Nimbus. This is one of my favorite um, ink colors and also one of my favorite ink names because it's named after a cloud cluster, I think. I'm sure it is. A Nimbus is a cloud, right? <gasps> Avril, you need to give that one a go. So I've added in my base layer to those flowers and I'm also going to add in the second layer to this one. Sorry, I said base layer. It wasn't. It was the second layer. Again, with the Nimbus. And then I can flip over my stencils onto the other card that we've got. Okay, and then I'm going to add these ones. And then I'm going to grab a darker shade of pink. So that is going to be the Coral Bliss. And I am. <gasps> yes, Avril. Yes, it definitely, definitely can. Okay. So I'm just going to move that stencil slightly. And then I'm going to go in with Coral Bliss to add the second layer onto those little poppies that we have there. Um, my daughter kept a lot of poppy seeds because we had poppy seeds in the garden the past couple of years and she's been collecting the heads and, and she planted all of the little poppy seeds that she had in the tiniest little space in the in the back garden a couple of months ago and they are all growing and at the minute it just like looks like a whole blanket of green so i am really not sure how many poppies we're actually going to um come up with <laughs> this year but i'm actually really looking forward to it. i do love a good poppy and they're kind of like oriental ones so it is going to look really really pretty i think 
Oh, tell Death Shelter you want. Yes, these stencils are awesome. They really, really are. They take a lot of the guesswork out of all of the coloring. And then what you can do is once you have used these to color, you can then use that as kind of a guide of where to add your colors next time. So I am kind of moving this around, trying to find out where it's going to go. And I think that's it there. Yay. <laughs> I struggled with that one, but it's fine. Everything's fine. So then I'm going to be using some Vineyard Berry for the second layer of that big Dahlia that we have. And I've just shifted the stencil after getting it in the perfect position. It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay. So that is the Vineyard Berry. Oh no, Rhea, really? That's weird. <laughs> but yeah, we do love our puppies. So there is going to be a whole mass of them. I just imagine it's going to look like a blanket of red pinky red in a couple of months time and they do get really big as well these poppies i'm gonna say that the, you know they probably come up to my shoulder i thought poppies were like tiny things but these ones are huge they're like <laughs> they're probably about four and a half foot off the floor so yeah <laughs> i don't know what's gonna happen when they all start growing to that height in a tiny tiny little flower bed so I have all of my flowers done and I, all I need to do now is add in my flower centers and the second part of those leaves. So for the leaves, I'm going to go with Shadow Creek. <laughs> oh, wait. see, I had, didn't even think of that. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know how that would work anyway. So, but yes, poppies are still, still very pretty. So I'm adding in this color. This is the Shadow Creek, so it's a darker color. And then I'm going to shift my stencil back over to this one. No worries, Patty. I'm glad that helped you out with the white flower situation. Nancy, yes, yes, it does. These are so easy and quick to use. I love them so much. <laughs> right, so once I have add that, I am then gonna add in those flower centers. I'm just gonna go with Snapdragon. It was the first one that, that was there. I am gonna need a really small tool. So these are some of the detailed ones. I did grab the wrong set but hey okay so I'm just going to line up those flower centers and just squidge that through so like I say I kind of use a mix of the blending tools depending on what I'm using it with so don't think that you need you know all you need to be able to do all of your um blending with one of them they're kind of like paint brushes you need different paint brushes for different effects that you do and to get into the smaller centers. So the detail ones is cool too. <gasps> Bob, I'm excited to get you for, you for you to get yours as well. I do hope that you kind of play around with it, maybe even create this card as well. That would be good. Kathy, the stencils are really easy to line up. I, I mean, sometimes I have a little bit of a trouble trouble is getting them perfect but once you know where they're going to go that's fine also oops, you do get the layering guide for the stencils so that's going to help you line these up as well so you do have that okay so I don't have my large die cutting machine on me at the minute 
So what I would have done is I would have taken the die that works with this and I would have cut along each. So I would have opened my card up because I don't want to cut through the back of the card. But I would pop that down, I would add some tape and I would run that through the machine. As I don't have my machine out and I don't want to be running off again, I mean, you know, I've, I've ran off quite a bit today. I am just going to do a little bit of fussy cutting on these. So like I said, you do get the die within the kit. So don't think that you have to do this kind of fussy cutting. You do not. It's just as I don't want to get off my chair again. Yes. I know I'm, I'm being a little bit lazy. <laughs> I didn't want to get up and grab my large icon machine, but I can fussy cut too. It's fine. I like fussy cutting. This time it is going quicker because I'm not paying that much attention to do it. I am leaving a little bit of a white border around the outside. I don't think this is going to make a huge difference when I put my card together. Uh, I just needed to do the other ones. Okay. Right. Okay, so that's one. I'm going to do the other one now. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Deaf Shelty Mom. <laughs> I'm sorry to your husband. <laughs> Yeah, but this kit is fabulous. And you do get a 3D embossing folder as well. So you get the six by eight stamp set, you get the stencil set, which covers the two large images in the set. Lots of beautiful sentiments. Um, and you also get the two dies that I've just shown that cut around the outside edge of the corner pieces and then a 3d embossing folder as well and they all work wonderfully together okay just trimming away nearly there <laughs> there we go and just think that if you did cut that with your die cutting machine, they would both be perfect. Unlike mine. Unlike mine. All right. Okay. So I am just going to burnish this down a little bit and burnish this one down. Okay. Now, I said we were going to create some kind of um gatefold so we have both of the images what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add some tape behind here i am using the really large roll from alternate this is so pretty and this um double-sided tape is really really thin I'm just going to add some tape behind this one. I possibly could have been a little bit uh, neater about this. All right. Oh! <laughs> I, I dropped my tape on my heat tool and it's and it scared me a little when it turned itself on. <laughs> All right, okay. So I've added some tape. Just for getting rid of that. Oh, Andrew, I'm glad that you got inky with it. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna place, open this one up. I am going to add that along the score line in that one. Okay, so you can see that they all line up together. So I can then place those together. And then we have this very pretty 
kind of gatefold card. They do tuck in within each other, or you can have one on top of the other. Let's create a bit of a sentiment for this one. I think we are going to go in the center. Okay. Hey, Flora. So I have a piece of black cardstock here. We have some really great sentiments in the stamp set. I seem to have misplaced it. One, one second. Here we go. I found it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm going to grab one of the large sentiments. I think this one here is going to be the one I'm going to go with. I have a piece of black cardstock. I'm going to add some anti-static powder on, aka baby powder. So I'm just going to rub that on. Okay, I'm going to grab some white embossing powder, a little bit of scrap paper too. Yay, I'm glad everyone liked it. I, I really wanted to leave like the thing to the end. Because, you know, it just looks so pretty, right? Okay, so just remember if you are doing this, you need to do two of the same um, corners, both at the same orientation on a card, and then you just flip one and they will fit perfectly together. All right, I am gonna be using some clear embossing ink for this one. Thank you, Tef Shelty Mom. <laughs> I yeah, uh, my um giggle and hum is normally something that happens on our live. So okay, so we are gonna stamp this down. Okay, pop it down, squidge it, squidge it. I am a little bit rough with my stamps, but they're okay, they can take it. Um on that. Debbie, yes, it's A2, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half for that one there that we have. And I'm just gonna heat set this one. Okay, I did have a little bit of a mess with my letters. You can see around here, this is looking a bit kind of not great but we can cover that up and we would be able to cover that up if my daughter had not stolen <laughs> my black pen ah Matilda okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a gray one ah, okay so normally I would do this with jet black okay so grab your jet black artist marker and then pull it in those little dots just with your marker. My gray is not working as much as my black works, but I have to tell you the black works perfectly. The gray, not so much. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna trim this now. All right, so there is another kind of thing that we need to remember when adding a sentiment onto a gatefold card, and that is we add it just to one side. So, yes, I'm saying this now. People are going, yeah, of course you're going to add that to one side, but, but I have added it <laughs> to both sides. Yes. Yes, I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my tape is either on this side or this side. And I'm going to go for this bottom edge here. And I'm going to add some foam tape to this one. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit into that corner. And then I'm going to get that into place. 
and that we go so that is the card complete we have a very pretty gatefold card there using the craft your life project kit for essence and you can change this card up just by changing the colors that you do use on the stencil or if you really wanted to you could watercolor with this and you could even just sit there and have a really great time coloring in with your artist markers or even pencils too all right so there is the card for today everyone i do hope that everyone has enjoyed this i hope that you've um, been able to pick up some tips and tricks or even a little bit of inspiration to go out and grab your craft stuff and just get creating it doesn't need to be perfect to be beautiful all right i am gonna pull you guys back up now sorry <laughs> okay so here we go right okay thank you everyone for spending your time with me it has been a pleasure i do hope that you have an amazing rest of your week so today and tomorrow and also a really great weekend as well thank you so much for joining me and thank you to lovely angel for popping in all of the links too i really do hope that you have a great weekend have a crafty day too and i'll see you very very soon Bye bye